All right, so I represent the 3%, was it? Manitoba. <laughs> so, <laughs> Rick is also from Manitoba, right? Yes. Were you born there? Awesome, and I was just uh, an hour, not quite an hour north of there, Dauphin, Dauphin, Manitoba, so Parkland, beautiful area, we have the Riding Mountain. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what brings me here to talk about uh, ocean education is kind of an interesting story. I was thinking, we were talking about ocean memories, and being from the center of the continent. Uh, I had my memory probably when I was 25. So we took a road trip out to Long Beach and I remember going out and looking when the tide was out and it was phenomenal. I thought the rocks are alive. They're just full of life and it was just something that really stuck with me. And then uh, when I went to Maui, I went snorkeling for the first time and I put the snorkel in my mouth and I'm like, ugh, why is it so salty? <laughs> so the salt, it was just, it just didn't click. That's, that's salt water, yes. I used to fresh water swimming. So, um, and then just when I got here yesterday, I had the privilege of walking along the seawall and I'm like, the ocean has a smell. <laughs> and it was, it was a, a, you just, I don't know, it was just such a unique experience. Uh, so yeah, the experiential part of, of um, our everyday lives and how we learn is very important. Anyway, I digressed quite a bit there. Um, I bring um, kind of an Arctic focus to um, ocean education, and that's what I'm going to be talking about. I work with a lot of scientists that focus on Arctic marine system sciences and Arctic climate change sciences. So we look at different ways that we can bridge um, what they're researching and bringing that to high school education. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce our programming through a video and that they, there's a student in there that has participated in our field program. Um, there's a scientist that discusses the program and the impact of the program and also a teacher. Funding? Yeah, just support that for like grants that students can do the course so they can go. Is that done in the video? Uh, we can discuss that. That's a good question. Okay. <coughs> Schools on the Board is an outreach program, um, Arctic Net, that sends about 10 students from across Canada um, onto the CCGS Amundsen each year, which is a Canadian. was a 
cannot get that from a textbook. Schools on Board is a very effective instrument at engaging kids, not only kids from the South, but also kids from the North. And they get to learn from one another. They learn from each other about the issues and the perspectives they have based on the geography of where they come from. It was truly Canada on board the ship. You had French, you had English, you had people from the North, you had people from the coast. It was, uh, it was a very wonderful tour as well. I think for me personally, the best part of the trip was connecting with um, the Inuit students who are part of the program, because it really, um, it, it really sort of brought home the realities of climate change. Um, so we have, and it's amazing because, um, oh, I forget your name. Where are you? Um, doing the Ocean Learning Partnerships. Oh, Chelsea. Chelsea. Yeah, when I saw your presentation, I'm like, that is like so, so much what we do. And it's very exciting. We do it on a different scale. We do it in the Arctic and just a bit of a different scale. Um, but you're getting the same kind of, kind of output and impact. So that is our, our main program, is our field program. Uh, the second one we talked about was the Arctic Science Day, and we try to bring what we we can only bring so many students on board each year, so we try to do something very local and bring the science to the students, and then we also look at engaging students through an Arctic Climate Change Youth Forum, and I think some of you guys in the room do this as well, where you bring together a group of youth. Um, we do it um, based on our climate climate change. So I'll just go briefly. Um, so for our Arctic Science Days. Um, everything is scientist-led, so I'm just a coordinator. Um, so the scientists actually um, lead the workshops, and typically we have about six workshops, and they're about 30 minutes. But we run through about 200 high school students and uh, middle-year students as well. Uh, and basically what we're doing is we're trying to introduce um, students to field research and the Arctic sciences. So we have a very short time with them, and it's always at an outdoor education facility. And the keys to most of what, I, what our programs are is the partnership aspect. So we developed a really great partnership with an environmental education facility. Um, and then also another important aspect is they, the scientists have me as a program coordinator. A lot of times scientists are very busy. They don't have the contacts. They want to do the outreach. It's amazing how much they get out of interacting with high school students and learning how to communicate their research. But having someone to kind of fulfill that role of a coordinator is very important. Uh, it's very important to have a hands-on um, component as well as being outdoors. And the scientists are very interesting. Uh, if there uh, are scientists in the room, you guys have an interesting story to tell, and it's engaging. So the students really grasp that. And the topic is interesting. And also, I have been lucky to get funding for some of these events, and we all know that it takes money. Uh, we did the same model in Cambridge Bay, Nunavut. Um, and it worked really well. We brought students from that local high school and we brought them out to scientists that were working on the ice in their local community. And a lot of times they see the park all on the ice and they didn't know what they were doing. So they had the opportunity to actually um, uh, see what the scientists were doing through a very similar manner. Our Arctic Climate Change Youth Forum, um, and again, we partner with the high school. Um, it's a biennial event. So we host this one every second year. We get about 150 to 200 high school students, and it's usually attached to a science meeting. Uh, and again, we get a huge support from the ArtofNet uh, Student Association. We've worked with APEX as well. Um, and again, a key to our success is building partnerships. Uh, in this case, last year, we worked with Nunavut, Subu Nuxavut, Arkarvik, and Students on Ice um, to deliver some of our programming. And again, same idea. I'm not going to go through all of it. 
But the key to this one is creating an opportunity for students to have a voice. So in the morning, we really focus on the science. They get uh, workshops that are led by the scientists. And then in the afternoon, we had the Nunavut Nunavut students, which are from, generally from Nunavut, um, but are based in Ottawa. And they are Carvet students. So we had a lot of Northern youth in the afternoon working with our students in small groups and leading some key discussions. So at the bottom, I, we were looking at doing an art cafe. So we, we looked at three, fe three themes this year, um, connecting to a changing Arctic, challenges, issues, and priorities, and opportunities and engagement. And I think that's key in a lot of the program that we're discussing today is having that piece where they actually have time to reflect on their actions. Um, the, the highlights um, for the, our field program were mentioned in the film, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but the highlights are the travel to the Canadian Arctic. Um, the face-to-face -face interactions with the scientists is huge, uh, it has a huge impact on the students. That mentorship aspect is, uh, is, has far-reaching and lasting impressions. Um, the field work and lab activities that they, they, get, um, they get to do as well. But we also make sure that they engage with youth and the student in the video really mentioned that that was key to her experience was engaging with the youth that were in the program and then also we do a community visit. So they get to engage with elders and policymakers in northern environments. And then also the teacher had mentioned that it was really like having Canada on a ship. So you have students from the north, the east, and the west all together in one small team. I want to just kind of go into some of the theoretical. When we put this pro when, the, when this program was put together, it was really focused on environmental education and education for sustainability. Uh, so we looked at the direct contact with an authentic learning environment and nature and science that results in raising positive attitudes and positive behaviors towards the environment. So that was kind of our, the main goal. And we looked at developing authentic kind of situations and, and simulated. And our Arctic Science Day is really kind of a simulated um, event, even though it has some authenticity to it. And we also looked at, we try to educate for the environment. So we, um, when we do activities, we like to have them to have discussions, put it into a context, have some engaging activities that they think about what they can do or what are the next steps. We also try to look at in the environment. So as much as we can, we like to create either a simulated like, environment, but it's best if it's right in the environment. And you can see by the programs that have been discussed that that is really key. And then also about the environment. So we want to give them that knowledge base that they can make informed decisions as well. And a lot, there was, I want to touch on program evaluation. And this has been mentioned before, whereas we're doing all this wonderful stuff of, uh, with experiential learning. And we had the opportunity, we've been doing this for 10 years. So we had about 90 students that had been, um, within those 10 years, come through our program. So we decided this year we would do, we had some funding. We hired a third party to, to help develop an evaluation plan and program and we implemented it. So we were looking at what are the impacts on the personal and working lives of participating students, and then the same question for the teachers, and then how our program can improve. And if you can do a program evaluation, it is, it's eye-opening. Uh, even as a program coordinator, you start to rethink what are your goals, are you meeting your goals, and it was a very important process, actually, a very hard process. Uh, our results are online, so if you go to the website, there's a PDF, and it goes through um, the questions that were asked, the methodology, the rationale, and the results. So, I only have one minute, but there, we always have results as anecdotal results. Uh, so we were, as you know, funders want concrete information. So this is another aspect of reason or reason why we did this, is to create, um, just get some are we meeting our goals? And how can we explain this to our funders? So we looked at connecting to science and the environment and um, the value that our participants uh, get from that is highly evident in their responses. And then the practical hands-on experiences too. Also the appreciation for the North's physical beauty as well as a strong connection to the cultural, environmental, and social aspects of life in the North had a huge impact on, on our students. Um, one key thing that I really wanted to focus on here is 
um, impacted individuals' attitudes for the environment and raised awareness about climate change and its impact onto the North. Um, also, the 74% surveyed online are interested in pursuing <coughs> education related to climate change, sustainability, and the environment as a result of the experience. Um, like I said, the whole our report is on, on our website. But I just wanted to share that, that piece of evaluating what you're doing and the importance of it, even though it's very difficult. <coughs> and then looking at ocean education, and like when most of our programming has been done through a lens of climate change literacy, um, and also Arctic marine sciences. So when this whole idea of ocean education just came onto my radar, it was, wow, there's so many connections. And as educators, the ocean is a great learning vehicle, and the Arctic is as well. And there's so many themes that can be brought into either or to teach the sciences and to inspire students um, towards either environmental literacy. So I just kind of listed the three that I thought were quite key. Um, the strong connections between our programming and the essential pr principles of ocean sciences. And um, ArcticNet is who I'm employed by. And they ha the multidisciplinary research environment creates so many opportunities to connect students to all aspects of ocean literacy. So um, I look forward to working more with this group. I was very excited to be asked to present here. And I'm very excited to be uh, a board member. And that is it. <laughs>